Hi everyone, I am back with another inspiring story for you about famous legal personalities. Now I am sure you all must remember a 2021 movie called Jai Bhim which became extremely popular and was liked by audience as well as critics equally. Now this movie was about uh, the story of a person who had gone missing and his wife tries to find about his whereabouts and eventually ends up you know finding a lawyer who fights her case and in fact who wins her case and successfully together they're able to find out what actually happened to her husband so i'll tell you all about it you know what kind of law was used in this particular scenario but more interestingly this was based on life of an actual person this was the inspiration behind the movie jay bhim was something that actually happened in the year 1993 and mr k chandru who was a lawyer at that time in tamil nadu and he later became a high court judge can you believe me a high court judge so therefore we call him justice k chandru he actually fought a similar case and this was the movie was inspired from this story so if you're thinking okay wow so this is the kind of if you have seen the movie i'm sure you will be a fan of him and if you've not seen the movie i would highly recommend you to get some inspiration you know because now this is the kind of work that we want to do Usually people say lawyers are liars. No, lawyers are not liars. Lawyers also fight for the rights of the people, right? So if you want to be a lawyer, if you want to feel, want to get into the field of legal profession because you want to fight for the rights of the people who nobody helps and you want to help everyone realize their civil liberties or their fundamental rights, again, this is a field for you, which again is very, very fulfilling you get to do the kind of social service that very few other fields will be able to provide you. So yes, if you're interested in social service and if you feel this is your true calling, helping people, you can also become a lawyer who files public interest litigations or files a lot of cases pro bono. Now, studying, uh, sorry, now fighting a case pro bono means that you don't take any money from the client for that particular matter because the client is very poor or very helpless or needy in that case and you fight their case for free. In fact, a lot of lawyers do that. Almost everybody does some pro bono cases and like, I mean, I'm very happy to tell you that even I do a lot of pro bono cases in my practice and this particular topic that we're discussing today is very close to my heart because we're talking about uh, writ petitions, habeas corpus petitions, public interest litigation and constitutional law cases. And you know how much I love constitutional law cases. In fact, that's my uh, area of specialization when I, uh, you know, studied at NLU Patiala. And also this is my field of work where I currently work uh, in the Madhya Pradesh High Court and the Supreme Court. This is my field of work. So I am personally very connected to this topic. So let's get into the details of this. So as you know, I'm talking about the movie Jai Bhim, but the actual inspiration behind the movie uh, was Justice K. Chandru. Uh, so now, uh, Justice K. Chandru, by the time the this actual incident happened in the year 1990, 92, 93, he was still a lawyer and uh, he was practicing in the state of Tamil Nadu. And such and such matter came to him that... Uh, a person from a very, uh, you know, marginalized community, a community which was tribal, a community which was poor and which was also considered so-called lower caste community. So some people from that community had gone missing and now one of those, that, that person's wife had come, come to him to seek for help and try to you know, find her husband. So in the movie, we see the characters Rajakanu and Senegai. So Rajakanu went missing and Senegai was the wife who came to seek for help to find uh, her husband. She was also pregnant at the time and they had a little daughter as well. So, um, but the same thing happened in real life. So similar scenario happened with uh, uh, Justice K. Chandru and Justice K. Chandru here. This is the actor who played his role in the movie and this is... Uh, Justice K. Chandru. So uh, the same thing happened in uh, with Justice K. Chandru when he was a lawyer practicing there and uh, he took up this matter. Now this was a very interesting matter because number one somebody had gone missing and 
apparently he the person was actually taken by the police initially that was the story that he was taken by the police he was in the jail for a few days but then uh, the police had uh, made a story that the, the the person tried to run away and therefore they had gone missing so obviously a case of habeas corpus was filed now if you don't know what habeas corpus is so it's one of the most important fundamental rights that we have now article 32 which gives the right to you know file a writ petition one of those writ petitions is a writ of habeas corpus and why i'm saying it's the most important fundamental right that we have or the most important writ petition that we have that it actually protects the right or the life of the individual which no other fundamental right can. So your article 21, right to life and personal liberty, this is the right that the habeas corpus writ protects. So essentially, if you want a protection of your life, the habeas corpus writ can come to your rescue. We have had a lot of famous cases pertaining to habeas corpus writ, you know, during the emergency or the ADM Jabalpur case. And we'll talk about those things later on. But um, so ultimately, these are the cases where if you go to the high court or if you go to the Supreme Court, let's say person X has uh, gone missing and the family has no idea where the person is. And the last time X was seen being taken by the police to the police station and now in the police station also they're not giving any information everybody's denying any connection with this person so the family and friends of mr x can file a writ in the high court of that state and it will be a habeas corpus writ now what a habeas corpus writ will do once the judge admits the case he will give a notice to the state government or the district government or the concerned authorities and order them to either produce this person x in front of the court within let's say 24 hours or 40 or 48 hours a particular time limit or give detailed information about the whereabouts or the safety or the location of mr x so what happens here is in cases of illegal detention or in cases where the procedure under the law is not followed properly, in all of those cases, to save the citizens of the country from the abuse of the government authorities or police or army or, or any of these departments, we have a protection in the form of the writ of habeas corpus. So since here also the police was involved and the person had gone missing from police custody, so a case of habeas corpus was filed. Now what happens when a case of habeas corpus is filed, there is a lot of, you know, a scuttle and inquiry that goes on why has the person gone missing, the superior police authorities called the inferior police authorities and like everybody in the district administration becomes a little alert about it, okay? So this is what happened and everybody became alert about it and the police came up with a cover up story they lied about it but eventually by the end of the movie you get to know that uh, the person uh, who was called Rajaganu in the movie he was actually killed in a fake encounter by the police right so in such cases of fake encounters and um, fake arrest um, the writ of habeas corpus is very very helpful in fact not just you know this is not something that I'm telling you just for your knowledge this is something that's very useful in real and practical life if you ever come across a situation like this somebody has been taken by the police and they're not following the proper procedure on one case there's a proper procedure you there's an fir there's an arrest made within 24 hours the person is presented in front of the magist magistrate then the magistrate gives a police custody so that is a proper procedure there we don't need habeas corpus uh, it's, but when the procedure is not followed and when everything is done illegally by the police and the authorities in that case you can file a habeas corpus petition and if the court finds if the court thinks that there is not enough reason to arrest the person court can also ask for the release of the person x or whoever has been arrested but this particular matter went on for a long, long time because nobody was able to find uh, Rajakanu or nobody was able to find this woman's husband. <coughs> so what happened? Now, this is something very interesting that does not happen in habeas corpus cases. You cannot question the witnesses 
that questioning the witnesses or examining or cross examining the witnesses that is usually done in the lower courts that's something that happens in the criminal court or in the lower court okay that does not happen in the high court normally but in this case using a precedence of a previous case now what is a precedence precedence means a famous court case where something has been done and now we can use that famous court court case to convince the judge to allow us also to do the same thing so in in that way um uh, justice chandru who was then a lawyer so lawyer chandru he convinced the the judge uh, the sitting judge of the high court at that time that you know there is a precedence and you can allow me to cross examine and to examine and ask questions and you know those policemen can take a witness stand and we can ask questions to them and that can be allowed uh, and can be done in this case and that was the real thing which eventually you know uh, brought all the truths out because there were a lot of discrepancies in the statements that were being given so if you think in a very straightforward manner it was a very difficult case nobody would have ever been able to find out what really happened to that woman's husband but because justice chandru took up the matter and he very uh, you know honestly fought it and he fought it with a lot of dedication and effort he went extra mile to do that and he used his knowledge of the law he used his wit he used his intelligence as well as knowledge of the law to you know clear out all the layers find out where where the police pers personnel are lying and to get the truth out out of the whole story so and as as you've seen that they've made a very inspiring movie on on the same thing so uh, so justice chandru however so let's talk about a little bit uh, let's talk a little bit about justice chandru and his life so he actually uh, studied at uh, the madras christian college uh, <coughs> before that he was in loyola college uh, chennai but he was uh, not allowed to finish his uh, studies because he was expelled expelled from the college because he has always had a very political affiliation from the beginning so he was a student leader and uh, uh, you know connected with the communist party of india and all of those things so he he was very active politically however when he finally completed his uh, law degree and he became a lawyer um eventually he he did fight a lot of cases for the rights of the people and this particular case made him very famous and uh, he was later uh, you know appointed as a judge of uh, the high court and then um after a point he also became a permanent judge of the high court and in the year 2013 he retired as a sitting judge of um, uh, the high court of the madras high court so i think uh, yeah he was in madras high court only i think when he retired so yeah he was elevated as a judge of the madras high court and uh, then he served for um, a lot of years and then finally he retired in the year 2013 so you see like you know a lawyer working in a please helping people who have no money to even pay him and he fights such a big case and the case also makes him famous and then he fights more cases helps more people and you know life takes him at such a point that one day he becomes the judge of the high court and which which obviously is a big deal so i i hope this gives you a lot of inspiration to you know pursue the field of law as well as once you are in a national university once you've graduated from a good college you also work hard in your career and in your profession with utmost dedication and these are the people that did not even go to top notch colleges okay he went to a very normal college he did a very normal law degree but still um think of how much of a name or how much of respect he has made for himself so i hope uh, you guys loved the story that i came up with today and um, again this is uh, justice k chandru with the actor that played his role in the movie and i hope to bring more such stories to you guys bye bye everyone